This is a massive storm. The most important message that I have for the public right now is please listen to what your state and local officials are saying. Uh, when they tell you to evacuate, you need to evacuate. East Coast reeling this morning as it absorbs the aftermath of Superstorm Sandy, where economic damages could be in the range of 10 to 20 billion. At least 30 people have been killed in seven states. More than 8 million homes are without power. And in New York City, the wounds are particularly severe. In the borough of Queens, between 80 to 100 homes caught fire last night and were destroyed. Public transportation, meantime, continues to be closed after extensive flooding. There is no timeline on when that will change. The level of devastation at the Jersey Shore is unthinkable. Along the East Coast this morning, signs of Sandy's fury. Lady Liberty's torches out as power outages spread. Nearly 5 million people this morning are in the dark. More than 1.5 million people were forced to evacuate. Sandy made landfall along the New Jersey coast, bringing 80 mile per hour winds and flooding. High tides and rough surf battered the coastline. Oh my God, it's washing everything away! New York City was hit by a 13-foot surge of seawater, flooding the newly unveiled Ground Zero Memorial subway stations and tunnels. In Rockaway Park, Queens, emergency crews scrambled to rescue people trapped in the path of a fire raging out of control. In Manhattan, hundreds of patients at this hospital, including babies, had to be evacuated after a backup generator failed. The city closed all tunnels and bridges. Subway and bus service had already been shut down. The stock exchange is closed again today, the first time weather has caused it to close for a second consecutive day since the 1800s. 90 mile per hour winds, driving rain, record breaking high tides and rough surf lashed the coastline as the storm made landfall in southern New Jersey. The mid-Atlantic and southern New England shores hit hard by flooding. In New York City, a construction crane buckled, dangling in high winds and raising the concern of other construction sites. The governor closed bridges, tunnels, and doubled the number of National Guard troops deployed. Horribly tonight. Many here expected that there would be flooding, there would be loss of power, but then this fire just erupted. We were in a home and the fire was literally right across from us. We drove around northern New Jersey for hours encountering interminable lines and frustrated people. It's activated. That storm did a, did a, did a, did a thing. Did a thing. Knocked down everything. You know, it is difficult to imagine what lies beneath in stations just like this one all over lower Manhattan. What you're about to see is a collection of everything that Sandy brought to bear. And water is the least of it. Deep underground, the beating heart of Manhattan's transit system, now an eerie labyrinth of epic proportions. Sandy's 14-foot surge washed into Manhattan's South Ferry Station like a tidal wave carrying thousands of pounds of debris. Above ground, cleanup is just as formidable. You see the color? That is fuel, that is oil, and that is transmission fluid. Each one is toxic, each one a hazardous material. This morning, three quarters of a million people are still without power. Public schools remain closed. Nearly 4,000 utility workers from all over the country are rushing to New York today to help turn the power back on. You should not expect those people that do not have service today to get service much before the weekend. A weekend that should be one of New York's busiest as thousands of people begin traveling across the world for the annual New York City Marathon, a race we're just starting now matters much more than finishing.